drafties to let this happen. And I would like to tell you that as much as we are in a solidarity, nothing is late and we can change the name. We all together, we can make a big strength to do that. Great. So, I will start. Okay, we are here uh, discussing the terminology of the dance, of our dance form. I believe that terminology is one of the main elements that have a direct impact on people's mind and people's vision and on people's point of view toward our career and toward us as professionals. To understand more the idea of the impact, let's have a look at other dance forms name and see their influence. Well, let's start with the ballet. Okay, <laughs> ballet. We all know that uh, in ballet, they, they dance on their toes, on their point, but they don't call it toes dance. Why? Even so, it's, uh, it's the particular specification. It's easy. It's because dancing is a profession of art. And art is the creativity, the culture, and the absolute beauty. Uh, ballet comes from uh, the word bal, is a French word. Um, means dancing night, fiesta of dance. Usually we say bal de danse. The first image that comes to your mind when we hear the word bal de danse is the luxury, the beautiful clothes, the flowers, the classiness, the pirouette. So it's, it's the beauty in all means. Uh, when we say Latin dance, the first image that comes to our mind is the identity. It's Latin, the identity. If we say, for example, Katak dance, Katak dance, there is, it has a Katak, the word Katak has its origin from Sanskrit language. So there is identity, which is Indian, India, and Katha in uh, Sanskrit means a story. So we have the culture. Now we have the identity, the culture, and the beauty, and the beauty. Well, let's have a look on the terms we are using for, the, for our art form. Belly dance, it's the most widespread name, even among professionals, even this conference is titled belly dance terminology. Well, when you say belly dance, the first that comes to your mind is the belly. It's the tummy, la barriga, the belly fat, the big mummies, the dietitian, the food in the belly, isn't it? Well, I will not continue, I will leave the rest for you. But where is the beautiful image, the aesthetic image in this term? Where is the identity? Where is the culture? Nothing. We all know that the term danse du ventre is a colonial name to uh, English belly dance. But it's one of the worst term ever used for this dance form. It gives a low concept, it degrades, and disgrace both the dance and the dancer. So imagine, imagine that we are dancers of the belly, dancers of the tummy. Are we? Are we? Of course we are not. Of course. Don't we use our arms in a beautiful way? Don't we use our shoulders, our head, our expression, our, our foot, our feet? So we are not the dancers of the tummy or the belly. Uh, do you know that... Uh, uh, in, in, uh, we never use the belly and the stomach muscles when dancing. We use the hips and the lower abdomen. And the lower abdomen. In Arabic also, we use the word waist, latai, for describing a good dancer. We say she has a good waist. We don't use other words. In order not to put down the value of the female beauty and uh, by using other terms. So, uh, belly dance, in my opinion, should be discarded from our vocabulary, uh, from the social networks, and all the way to swap this to, to swap to other term that is more appropriate. Uh, 
It's another term that I started some they like to use it, which is baladi. Baladi is uh, an Arabic word, means native in English. Uh, we all know that rock shakri is a traditional dance in the region, in the whole region. So actually, as a traditional dance, it's native. Yes, actually, it's native. But uh, does rock shakri is the only native dance in our countries? Of course not. We have other dance forms that are also dated and traditional and of our legacy. So what should we call them now, then? If they are, if the rock sharky is native, other dances, what should we call them? Important? Well, it's a bit confusing, especially uh, for the next generation, for the future, it will be a bit confusing. That's why I prefer to discard this term and uh, uh, to keep it as it is now, we use a baladi for a style under uh, the rock sharky that is very beautiful and has very beautiful, uh, based on some specification like like Ashra Baladi and Rasidati, which is very beautiful. So I prefer to keep it a style, but not a title for our dance form. Uh, another term, some day uh, you, say, you say Lebanese dance, Egyptian dance, Turkish dance. Well, since uh, it's a regional dance heritage, it's not realistic to or correct to name this dance after a specific one specific country of the source unless this country is the only country of origin of this dance but it's not easy to claim that this country is the only one and the only origin of this dance we have to prove it we have to prove it by documents Otherwise, it would be kind of forging or monopolizing for commercial purposes. And I believe we are not even allowed to monopolize an art because it's, uh, it belongs to humanity. Uh, I will take an example. Let's say, let's take Dabke as a dance uh, example. Dabke is famous in Lebanon, uh, but the fact that is uh, it, it's the dance legacy of the region, like Greece, Turkey, Syria, Jordan, Palestine, not only Lebanon. We cannot say Dabke is of Lebanese origin, of it. this is Lebanese Dabke. No, I have to prove it first. Uh, I will take you a little tour. In the past, even though it's terminology, we are not digging in the history for researchers. So, but a little tour. We all, we, during Abbasi times, so and we can, you can see this, you can read this in the old manuscripts and the old books. Uh, and the, during Abbasi time, uh, in the royal courts, this dance was so called Raks al Rawani. Rawani is the plural of Rania, which means the very beautiful woman that does not, does not need any makeup or accessory to boost her beauty. So this dance was designated for girls with elite beauty. That's why even at this time here in our countries, when, when we say an oriental dancer, Raksa Sharkiya, the first things that comes to our mind is a beautiful woman. Unfortunately, later the word Rawani started to hold a wrong dialect meanings of prostitutes. So that's why I really d discard this uh, this term. Uh, other terms were public in the last centuries that were varied from um, region to another or from country to another, like Rax al Hawanim in Egypt. It was very public. Uh, Hawanim is a Turkish uh, word, means ladies. Uh, in the Levant, Lebanon, Syria, Jordan. Uh, the most public was Raks al Nisa. Nisa in Arabic means ladies. So we have Hawanim in Egypt, which is a uh, uh, Turkish name, ladies, and Nisa in the Levant, which also named ladies in Arabic. So both, but both terms were used for non professional ladies dancing. 
it's the social dance version that was very decent, very uh, classy dance by women at the social occasions, at the weddings and fiestas. Yes, it was very, very decent, very classy in total. Unfortunately, while the professional dance scene had some impurities, according to the to some written text descriptions. But the fortunately, the fortunately thing is these impurities were locally confined and were not sub submitted at the cinema and TV. So they were trimmed before they going over the screen. That's why the golden era dance was so elegant and so called golden. Uh, another term that would surprise everybody. It's rarely used, rarely, but, and I heard it two times in my life actually, but I love to tell you about, which is Tatari. Tatari, yes, it comes from the word Tatar, the ethnic groups. I have heard this uh, term two times in my life. One time from my grandma who was telling me about what she knows about Oriental dance. Second, Time I read it at a text description descripting the art scene uh, of the area at the, in the 19th century till the beginning of the 20th century. But it's not a place to discuss, of course. But in brief, I discard this possibility because our dance was even before they came to the region. Last, last. Uh, we have Sharki and Arabi. According to the stories of our elders, it is called Rax Sharki because it is the dance of a Rax, Shark. From Arabic land to the lands of Persia, isn't it, Zahra? <laughs> to and even among Turkish. Uh, also, they call it Arabic because it's in the region of the Arabs. So we have Sharki and Arabi. Another opinion. Uh, is that when Western accidental dances started to emerge in the region, those terms have been created to distinguish between both types, the West and the East. But it's not documented actually. The most dominated, the more dominant is Rock Sharky. It is used in all the movies, whether the Egyptian, Lebanese, Syrian, it's Rock Sharky at the credits of the films. Uh, in all publicities, in the movies, in the magazines, in the TV shows, at any debates, even among the societies in all Arabic countries. I have visited all Arabic countries, even among Arabic communities around the world. It's Rat Sharki. In all the publicities, uh, the term Rakisa Sharkiya was the only term used for all dancers from various countries. Never used any other term, any country name, anything, no nothing, but Raksharki and Arakisa Asharkiya. I believe Raksharki is the term most realistic for two reasons. The first, it is an Arabic, Arabic term pointed on the region of this region that is by Arabs and Sharki pointed to the extent eastern areas where this dance took place. So al Shark, uh, it should be the Rak Sharki should be the main term for this dance. For the rest of the terms like historical, Baladi, Andalusi, Nawari, Shabi, Tarab, Solotabla, Kojek, Rom, Shefteteli should be called styles and substyles. I hope I um, have explained enough, even though the time is really tight. Uh, to get to, to my point, hope everything was clear. I, I call you all together. Let's stand up together in a solidarity to clean up our dance form from all impurities, starting with the term from belly dance to raks sharki, and make this conference a stamp in, for the future. Thank you so much.